Hello, my name is Raman Sridharan and I'm Product Manager for Vibration Controllers here at Data Physics. And today I'm going to show you how to run a high channel count vibration controller test with simultaneous time history recording and data export. The agenda for this video, the hardware configuration is covered in a separate video. I highly recommend you watch that video before watching this one. It's a quick watch. In this video, I'm going to start with setting up a random vibration test for a 200 plus channel count system. And then I'm going to actually configure that test to record time data and export the time data automatically, as well as export the processed frequency domain data automatically at the end of the test. So a lot of data processing uh, can be pre-configured in our 900 series software, and uh, the high channel count does not trip it up. So this is a picture of the chassis that I'm actually going to be running on for this demo. It is three of our Abacus 912 chassis. Each one has 72 channels and I'm going to be using one of those channels as an output and all the other 215 are going to be configured as input channels measuring and recording during the test. I'm going to click on new random vibration test and create a new test. I'm going to gloss over the test parameters tab of the setup and focus on the channel table. The channel table is the biggest difference between a low and high channel count test. So if I click on the inputs button, I can view all the chassis that I have in this test or click on edit system in the top right to get a checkbox view of those chassis. Now in the input channel selector, I can click on all and that'll select all the channels in the test. Now all my channels are enabled. I can also go through and uh, select them one at a time in that graphical view if I want to. Now in our channel grid, we have the ability to sort through channels. So for example, I can click on the filter icon in the BNC column and say, I want to see every BNC between channel 72 and 144. That's going to show me everything that's on my second chassis. And once I apply that, now I can make a change to any of these channels or select in the left column and right click on any cell to make a change to all the channels that are selected. So for example, I can change their voltage range or sensitivity or channel name or anything of that sort with the multi-select functionality. Now there's a lot of useful uh, tools to handle high channel count, to deal with high channel counts. There's obviously a lot of uh, information you have to put into this table. Uh, one of the pointers I want to show is the input channels uh, viewer. If you click on the inputs button, uh, it actually shows you the graphical view. So you can look at a BNC on a chassis and you can know exactly which channel number that corresponds to. So for example, if I want channel 144 is the first channel on the third chassis. So if I know that I'm plugging something into that channel, I can look at my viewer and uh, that's channel 144, then I can filter on channel 144 and make any changes to that channel that I want to. So in this case, I'm gonna rename channel 144 to be control copy since I have a BNC teeing the control channel to channel 144 as well. Now coming into the reference tab, I'm going to gloss over this. Uh, again, this isn't a random vibration tutorial in the control parameters. Again, most of the default settings usually work. I'm not gonna go into details in this video. In the Signals tab, this is where I'm going to set up exporting. So I'm going to say I want to export my last data save to ASCII format, and now I'm going to tell it which signals I want to export. So first I'm going to export my vibration control signals and also my PSDs. So this is a lot. My vibration control is obviously just a few channels, but my PSDs is all 215 channels uh, that I'm going to be exporting into an ASCII file. So it's a lot of data, but you know the controller will go through at the end of the test and automatically put that into the export folder. Now my, I'm also going to go through and add a time history record of this test. So it's going to record all 215 channels and I'm going to do that at a higher sample rate. I'll say 50 kilohertz and uh, enter a file name for this recording. And then on the right side, I'm going to go ahead and select which channels I want to record. So I don't have to record all my channels. I'm going to in this case, but uh, if I wanted to record a subset of channels, I could just do that here since these time history files can get quite large. Now, I also want to show, point out I can record the, the drive that's going to the shaker. That also gets recorded in the same exact way that an input channel gets recorded, so you don't have to tee your drive back uh, to get the time, time domain version of your drive signal. That's already recorded uh, as part of your test. I'm going to tell the, the software to move my time history recording to my computer on, and, and export that time history at the end of the test. Now one functionality that we have in the 900 series is to add multiple recordings. So I'm going to add a second recorder to this test going at a much higher sample rate, let's say 
at 100 kilohertz, and I'm going to only do this on a couple of channels because say I want a really high speed data for, you know, maybe my control channel, I can do that and say, hey, record 100 kilohertz on just on channel one. Um, I'll add another channel on here for fun, but uh, I'm gonna say, so my file sizes don't get into the gigabytes, you know, within a few seconds, um, but I can get that high resolution recording on high speed recording on just a couple of channels. Um, and I'm still going to get that 50 kilohertz recording on all my other channels. All right, I'm going to tell it to move data to my computer on end, and this test is ready to go. So just to recap, there's a lot of things happening in this test. I am going to be doing vibe control to 2 kilohertz. I'm recording on all 200 plus channels, and I'm going to export the processed FFT data into ASCII format. I'm going to export my control signals into ASCII format. I'm recording at 50 kilohertz, all 200 plus channels, and I'm recording at 100 kilohertz, my control and a couple of other channels, the drive channel and one other channel. And all of that time history data, the files that get really large, are going to be exported uh, to into ASCII format at the end of the test too. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, but. Uh, the 900 series is built for this, uh, built for this high data throughput, and uh, we'll see that it handles this without any problems. All right, so I'm gonna click on initialize, and it's gonna tell me how much time, how much disk space my throughput files, my time histories are gonna take on each chassis for the current, the configuration that I set up. I'm gonna hit yes and say that I want to record that anyway and my test will get sent down to the 912 chassis and now they are ready to run. Now you can see I've got a, I'm gonna click the master start button but you can see each of my, my random vibration control and each of my recording, my time history recordings, each have their independent start and stop button. So my pre-test is complete in my random vibration control and I'm gonna start the test. Now while the test is ramping up, I'm going to right click on my plot and add signals. I'm going to try to add another signal to my control plot and I'm going to use the filters that I defined and I'm going to sort by the channel name. Now I'm going to type in control copy which is the name that I gave the channel and now I find all the signals associated with that particular channel. Now I can also do that by sorting by channel number um, but uh, in this case, if you name your channels appropriately, it's really easy to find data corresponding to one particular channel. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to set a line width of 2 on that signal, and you can see it's added to the plot, and it overlaps exactly with the control channel, which is what I'd expect, since those two channels are uh, physically tied to the same uh, signal. All right, so I've run for a little while. I'm going to click the Master Stop button, and then the Master End button to end my test. Now the recording transfer window appears that shows my time history recordings and their transfer status. So they're currently on the chassis and they're being transferred to the host computer. And once they are transferred to the host computer, then they're going to be exported to the ASCII format that I requested. All right, so now that's all complete. It happened in a matter of a couple seconds. It's gonna ask to review the test. I will enter review mode. Here's where I can generate a report or have the software automatically generate a report. Uh, I can also generate any plots that I want to uh, in the same way that I did when the test was running. I can do that all in post as well. So here I have the export folder opened up in Explorer and you can see my two export files. The first one is the control signals and the second one is my PSDs uh, of all 215 channels um, exported in my ASCII file. So I'm gonna uh, close that and I'm going to bump up to the recording export folder to show those recordings that I told it to export as an ASCII file also. So if I go to my run one, here's my time history and there is my 215 channel uh, time history for the duration of the whole test. Now I should also add that these are just the ASCII exports. The data is also saved in the manage test screen in your test database. Uh, that you can access through the DP900 software. With that, I'm going to conclude this presentation. Data Physics has put a lot of work into the 900 series product, not only to ensure that our system has no bottlenecks when the channel counts get into the hundreds or thousands, 
but also to make sure that the data acquisition and exporting process is as streamlined as it can possibly be. As you saw in this video, hundreds of channels of FFT data, random control, time histories at 50 and 100 kilohertz, uh, were all simultaneously processed and exported within seconds of the test concluding. Other controllers or other acquisition systems, the process of doing this would take several minutes or hours, and that difference is what I mean when I say that the 900 series product has streamlined high channel count vibration control and signal analysis. Thank you. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to reach out to myself, Raman Sridharan, Product Manager of Vibration Controllers at Data Physics, or to your local Data Physics representative.